beginners, listen, get a hundred rounds of jab sparring. I think that last round was, was uh, Malachi's 30th round. And it's with different levels of fighters. He's been in with some beginners just like him, but it's only the jab. And he's not developing bad habits. That's the key. He's learning to keep that right hand in place. And what that, right there, he got it out of place. He's going to keep it in place. But what that's going to do for him is it's going to help him. It's going to help him develop good habits early in his career. And those good habits will stay with him throughout his career. Verse. Rushing him into a two, he's, he's already learning a three, he's learning how to, you know, fight inside. We will learn how to fight inside. He, there is another drill we do, a fumble drill, where he does learn some inside fighting. But we're working on both sides of the spectrum. Right now, for him, in that hex boxing stance, he's working more of, of an aggressive counter puncher. He's trying to come forward. Malachi, let's work the other side of the spectrum. Let's try to box. Get that hand out a little farther. Yep. Let's box now. Oh, you have more success boxing. So he's learning to, to mix this up and be able to change and adjust depending on what's working for him or not. So now, look, he got... We had to go back to the hex because, because his opponent was getting in range on him. He was getting up inside his range, so he had to change his, his stance up. A lot of guys, you start out trying to learn a Philly shell, an elusive style. The problem with that is you have nothing to adjust back to when it's not working. So this, learning multiple styles, is going to help you. And a basic stance is the hex boxing stance. And it helps beginners. I think it's the best thing for beginners to learn that along with learning how to box at range and use your legs. So that way you can switch back and forth on each side of the spectrum as you develop your skills. They got about 19 seconds left in the round. Let's pick it up, guys. Let's pick it up. Yep, not, yep, and he's getting wet. He's getting wet. You, you're going to swim, you might get wet. The goal is to swim without getting wet, but, but you're going to get touched. That's part of boxing. So we're on, what, 31 rounds now, Malachi? 29. 29. That was 29? Okay, so he had, you had 27 coming into the gym. So you got 27, 29 rounds. This will be his 30th round. Now, by taking our time with them and getting them 100 rounds of just jab sparring, when he develops into learning the two and the three, and we get another 100 rounds before we move to the next skill. That's the problem. A lot of guys, you move too fast. Beginners, you move too fast early, and it slows you down later. But if you take your time mastering skills along the way, they're going to stay with you. You're going to develop good, solid, fundamental habits that will stay with you. And as you learn the spectrum of styles and how to move up and down that spectrum and make adjustments as needed, and like I said, you're going to develop your own style. You're going to develop into one of those styles primarily. But you're going to be multidimensional as a fighter, a complete fighter who can make adjustments. But as far as the striking goes, stick with the feint and the jab till you get logged those 100 rounds in that how-to boxing training journal. Get that 100 rounds of jab sparring in. And also log your, your phone booth rounds. Your phone booth rounds could be, should be a continual growing number throughout your entire career you should continue to get those phone booth rounds and that's defense training. So focus strictly on defense. And even in the phone booth, sometimes we will counter back, we'll work on counters in that phone booth. So, you, you know, you'll develop that, but it's, it's a highly concentrated defensive drill 
the number one drill that every beginner needs to know and learn to stop getting punched in the face and to get comfortable with shots coming at your face. When you just start boxing, especially you're late. Malachi is 18 years old. That's late. That's late in the game, right? But he's going to be very good because we're taking our time with him and developing him the right way with solid fundamentals. And we're not just throwing him in because there's a fight next month and getting him a fight with some other beginner. And they're going to get in there looking real sloppy. And he's going to go off instinct rather than skill. He won't, he won't, because he don't have the skills developed yet. But we take our time with him, build him the right way. When he gets in there, he's going to dominate opponents. And, and he'll also be able to compete with much more experienced fighters. When, when you start late at 18, you have to make conditioning your strength, and you have to make fundamentals your strength. And you also have to become a student and make boxing IQ your strength. Because the one thing that will be a disadvantage to you will be experience. By the time Malachi becomes an open fighter and he's fighting guys that are like Vershawn who've been fighting since they were toddlers, who've had over 300 fights, we're giving up experience. But we got to be superior on the conditioning, on the fundamentals, and on the IQ. So that's all, that's all part of it. Unless that, that youngster was brought up under a high IQ environment, then, then he might be able to compete with us on IQ. But we should be in better condition and we should have better fundamentals. And because of that, we can defeat guys. Eventually, Malachi will be able to defeat guys that have more skill than him, that are more experienced than him, that are faster than him, that hit harder than him, that are stronger than him just off of those solid fundamentals, superior conditioning, and high boxing IQ. So that's how we bring up beginners. That's how you go from beginner to winner, is you, is you put the time in and you're patient early so you can go far later. So let's get one last round in. Let's get one last round. I wanna test, test Malachi's will here. This is your 31st round. And, and when he goes home today, he has a how-to boxing journal. He's going to log these rounds. He's going to reflect on his experience. He already wrote down his attention today. He's going to, going to reflect on what worked, what didn't. He's going to reflect on his execution of his intention. Did he execute on his intention? He's trying to stay relaxed. He's trying to stay calm. That's a big thing for him right now. He's going to maybe reflect and say, oh, once jab started coming, once Vershawn was doubling up the jab, or once he started making contact, I got tense. You know, I noticed I got tense. Another thing you can do, um, record yourself. Record your sparring rounds. That way you can really look and analyze it from an outside perspective, and you can see better what are you doing, what are you not doing and you're gonna be able to raise your awareness, one, of what you're doing and not doing effectively. And it's just gonna help you tremendously if you record your own rounds and not necessarily for social media, although that seems what everyone does these days. It's not for that, it's really for the developmental process. But you can put, put a clip of it out there on social media to, to show your progress, celebrate your victories. but. More importantly, it's for you and your own library of footage on yourself as you develop from beginner to winner. And you can see, oh, I reacted emotionally once I got touched in the body. You can see what happens from that outside perspective. So very important. I had a teammate named Julius Fogel, and I don't think Fogel began boxing until he was in the Army. So that was after 18. Um, he did become a U.S. national champ. He won the national pal. Uh, he won multiple championships. I can't even tell you how many times he won the Arm, All Army Armed Forces Championship. Vogel recorded everything. He recorded his sparring session. He recorded his, his fights. And he also studied the greats. So he spent a lot of time doing that and self reflecting and constantly studying. And as a late starter, you know, starting after 18, that really helped him go a long way 
in his boxing career. And you need to do the same, champ. If you watch this video to the end, you'll learn what took me from a car accident that left me unable to walk to the world championships in just four years. As a former world-class boxer, and then as a trainer, coach, and teacher, I've invested over 40 years mastering the art and sweet science of boxing.